Being a victim of emotional incest can be the root cause for many issues that follow you later in life, many problems related to self-image, self-esteem, and security. Today I want to look at Karen Carpenter and explore if she was perhaps a victim of emotional incest. Hi everybody, welcome to today's Ask a Shrink where I do want to talk about the underlying issue of emotional incest and how it can lead to other problems later in life, particularly around food. Eating disorders are common with victims of emotional incest. And I speak of this from my own experience, having been a victim of emotional incest myself growing up. And for those of you who are not familiar, maybe this is the first time watching one of my videos, I do talk quite a bit about emotional incest. You can click up right now if you'd like an overview about what emotional incest is all about if you're not familiar. The link will also be in the description box below. But being a victim of emotional incest, once I reached my late teens, early 20s, I was just extremely lost because I had no sense of self because my identity had been ripped from me as a child growing up because I was emotionally smothered by my mother. So in college ages 18 through 21, I was in a routine or schedule, if you will. I was pursuing my college degree. So that kept me sort of grounded in that sense. I was focused on my education, albeit a very lost soul, but that was my goal to get through the four year university program. And so that didn't allow me a lot of time to question too much about myself or flounder too much because I was zoomed in on something. Well, once I graduated and I was on my own at the age of 22 and out in the world and I didn't have anything to focus on and I was free flow in terms of feeling all the emotions that I had kept at bay for quite a bit of my life, then I really began to flounder because of the lack of a strong identity which had been ripped apart from my mother who emotionally took me over now began to rear its ugly head. And how that showed itself for me the first year out on my own was that I began to binge eat. And the binge eating happened for several reasons. One, it was me trying to control something in my life because most of my life felt so out of control. So at least if I could control the food either going in or not going in, that did give me a false sense of control over something in my life. Also, it just shows how people rely on something, including myself, to deal with uncomfortable, complicated feelings that you're not ready to look at at the time. You can't go inward and feel those feelings. I wasn't able to do that at that age. So quite often we put the focus on something. Now that could be drugs, alcohol, or in this case, I'm talking about an eating disorder. So eating disorders are relatively common for people who grow up as victims of emotional incest. And again, it has nothing to do with the food per se. Eating disorders are not really about the food. That's just the symbol or the symptom, if you will. That just simply represents the confusion and the inner self-hatred and the inner self-criticism that's going on in oneself. And it plays out by trying to control food in some form or fashion. So with that said, I found it very interesting that I saw an article about Karen Carpenter and the fact that the real reason for her struggling in life with her anorexia, one author thought was due to the fact that she had a very controlling, conditional, loving type of mother. I thought, hmm, possibly a victim of emotional incest here. I don't know for sure. Obviously, I've never interviewed Karen Carpenter. I'm just going by what I've read as well. But it certainly is something to think about. Number one, when we look at her demeanor overall, how she presented herself to the world in her interviews and so on, there was never any display of any real emotion in terms of unpleasant feelings, which is one of the symptoms of being a victim of emotional incest. You need to be the people pleaser, the chameleon, the one who doesn't want to rock the boat because that was your role as a child. So you rarely are going to see any intense, unpleasant emotions from a victim of emotional incest because that wasn't allowed growing up. So all that is kept in. Now what you see on the outside is this pleasant facade as if the person is very well adjusted to life. And for many of us, that's what we saw in Karen Carpenter. She was the all-American girl, if you will. She always seemed so steady and confident and very mellow and very non-reactive and always kind of agreeable to some point. You never saw her on stage having meltdowns or yelling at people or having temper tantrums or blowing up at her brother Richard because victims of emotional incest are not going to show that side of themselves. They're going to bury all that. That's why they suffer. And that was learned at home growing up because they weren't allowed to do that. They had to be there purely for the perpetrating parents' needs to be the little mini wife, the mini husband. 
And so all this, all their identity got denied and it shows itself in terms of being this well-adjusted person, which of course is part of the whole facade. So I delved a little bit into Karen Carpenter's life and I found it very interesting that in the 1989 CBS film, The Karen Carpenter Story, screenwriter Barry Murrow was blocked at every turn from telling the true story of Karen's desperate desire for her mother's affection. Now this is common with victims of emotional incest. It's a conditional love you're receiving from the parent and you want the real love. It goes on to say that Karen's mother Agnes and brother Richard insisted on films being rewritten as they were being filmed. Anything that reflected badly on the family was excised. It was taken out. So that's the presentation of the parent who's taken over a child, if we tie this into emotional incest, where it's all about how things look. It's all about appearances. And it's possible from reading this that Karen went through similar experiences. It then goes on to say that a new book by Randy Schmidt reveals the emotional problems at the core of Karen's eating disorder, her relationship with her mother, and the mother's inability to show love and affection that Karen so constantly craved. It goes on to say that Schmidt spoke to hundreds of friends and colleagues while writing the book called Little Girl Blue, which I haven't read yet, but I want to go read it. And the picture that emerges of the Carpenter family is one of a controlling matriarch concerned with outward appearances. The mother, Agnes, is portrayed as stressed and uptight and was known among Karen's and Richard's musical acquaintances as the Dragon Lady. At Karen's worst, her family insisted she had no emotional problems and that her over dieting was something they could sort out by themselves. So I don't know the real deal, but I can certainly tell you that a lot of what's going on here with Karen Carpenter, what happened in her life, ties in very closely to what a victim of emotional incest goes through. There's the strong parent, the parent who's taken over the child. That parent is concerned about appearances and is creating suffering for the child on some level. The child pays the price by sort of wiping out their identity. They don't feel like they really exist, which then leads to not really loving themselves. They really don't know what self-love is. That turns into a lot of self-criticism and self-hatred as they get older. And then that will play itself out in terms of other issues that are related to dealing with the emotional pain caused by all this if it's not dealt with in a therapist's office. And one of them that's very common is using food as a way to numb oneself or seeing a self-image in how one views him or herself through food. So if you're skinny enough, then maybe you'll be good enough. It's very complicated, the relationship between food and people who are suffering with a low self-esteem and some self-hatred. But it all ties into control on some level because it's the one thing you can control. And in a chaotic family growing up, the child had little to no control. So something to think about, we all love the music of Karen Carpenter, what an adorable soul she appeared to be. Her music was just tremendous, and it's very sad that her life ended at the age of 32 due to starving herself to death, which is a result of her childhood trauma. So please leave me some comments below. I'd love to hear any thoughts you have about eating disorders tying into emotional incest. Please subscribe to my mental health YouTube channel if you like these kind of videos. And until next week, this is Brad Shore signing off from Ask a Shrink.